Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I want to talk about how to get the mean or average of a set of numbers using JavaScript. I'm going to kind of go over my sort of naive or brute force approach to this using a regular for loop. And then we're going to uh, do a bit of a refactor from there using reduce, which is a higher order function. We kind of break this into two parts, right? We want to get the sum of the numbers of the data set and then take that sum and divide it by the amount of numbers in the data set and as a caveat for myself I've written we want to take that final number which could be a float number or a decimal and round it down to the nearest whole number so how do I kind of go through this whole thing I break it into really two parts so I'm getting the sum of all the numbers and the way that I'm doing that is I am creating a sum variable with let which lets me continuously update that variable. I wrote a for loop. I'm using a for of syntax here because I don't necessarily need to work with the indices of the numbers. I just care about the numbers themselves. So I'm saying for each number in the array, I'm just choosing to call each number number here. So for each number in the array, I am adding that to my sum. And if you're not familiar with this plus equals syntax here, what that basically just means is I'm reassigning the value of sum to be the result of adding what sum was plus number. So for every number in the set, I'm adding it into the sum until we get the total sum. Then I am grabbing that total sum, dividing it by the length of the input array, which was here. Uh, if we're using this numbers array, it was five numbers, right? So I'm dividing my sum by five. And then as my caveat, I have to round it down. So I'm using this math library in JavaScript, which is a native library with a whole bunch of methods on it, like floor, which will round down. So when I run this, you'll see, I think it will be four for this particular data set. Yeah, it is four. So this is good. It's fine. Uh, but we can use reduce here to kind of clean this bit up a, a little bit. So when do we use reduce? The time when we use reduce is when we have an array of data and we want to return out a single thing. That thing can be anything. It could be a string, it could be a number, a boolean, it could be uh, an object or an array. It could even be a nested structure of like an array of objects. That's still just a single thing. It's still a single array. In this case, what do I want to return out? I want to return out a number. So I am going to just comment this out for the time being. So I'm going to create a variable called sum. Again, that's the, that's the variable name that we are working with down here. So I'm just gonna keep that. So sum, how are we going to get the sum using reduce? I'm going to call reduce on my array. And if you've watched my other videos again, you know that reduce is a higher order function and it takes a, as we say, a callback function. And that callback function has two required parameters. Those, those required parameters are going to refer to something called the accumulator and a reference to the current number that we are looking at. So reduce is a loop. It loops over all of the numbers of the array that we call it on. So in this case, uh, I'm going to call my accumulator just ACC. That's a, a naming convention that I usually stick with. And I'm going to call each number that we are currently working with. I'm just going to call it num. Okay. So what type of data do we want to return? Again, we want to return a single number. So reduce has a optional second argument here and we can choose to either use this or omit it. I'm going to choose to use this optional second argument. I'm going to initialize it as a zero because we know that we want to eventually return a number. And this is going to refer to the number that I'm going to be continuously adding each number of the array data set into. And this number zero here, that is what we are referring to when we refer to this first parameter accumulator. That is the accumulator. I can either explicitly define it from the get go, or I can choose to omit it, which uh, watch one of my reduce videos to see how that works. But here I'm going to explicitly start my accumulator out at zero. So what do I want to do on each iteration of the reduce loop? I want to add to my accumulator whatever num currently is. And then I always have to, when I break my 
reduce loop out into multiple lines, I have to always remember to return the value of whatever that accumulator currently is out to the next iteration of the reduce loop. So let me give this another run here. Now this is good, this is fine, it works, but we can use a bit of a shorthand method in declaring this reduce method. I'm gonna do that right here. I'm gonna say const sum again, array reduce and you'll kind of see this as a convention. A lot of uh, people do this pretty often. You'll just see something like A and B for accumulator and current value. And I'm going to return, remember if we're using this fat arrow syntax and we only have a single thing coming after it that's implicitly returning whatever comes after it. So I'm going to implicitly return the result of A plus B. So basically what this is doing is it's stepping through each time, it's adding B to A, and then it's returning that total out to the next iteration of the loop, and at the very end it's going to return that total out to this variable sum. Okay, so same sort of thing here. So you'll probably see, you'll probably see this pattern kind of something similar to this uh, very often. It's really, you know, just, just two lines going on here. Very simple. Um, any questions, leave me a comment below. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. And thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, feel free to share it with a friend. I'll see you all later.